this lab we are going to do today PowerShell programming, modular programming. We already know on Windows network and computers we can uh, manage users groups, computers using a uh, net.exe and a PowerShell command list or mixed both and uh, this Tuesday we also learned uh, Windows uh, management infrastructure in instruments can also be used to do the same job and in this lab we are going to generalize and uh, modularize various uh, functionalities of the previous lab the lab 05 and we will rewrite the program completely in PowerShell in lab 05 we mixed net.exe and PowerShell together but in lab 06 this lab, we will only use uh, PowerShell. Here are the tasks. First, we need to uh, learn about the PowerShell scripts, uh, PowerShell command list first, then we will use them to write the complete uh, the scripts. It looks like the computer freeze. Okay, here it is. Task one: Manage the Windows users and groups in PowerShell with uh, command list. Again, I would like to create a folder for today's lab. lab 07 and also I want to download everything from this uh, called the companion website let's do it later first we go uh, yes lab 6 oh uh, thank you uh, here is uh, lab 6 6 not 7 Right, level zero six. Now, let's uh, complete these tasks. Uh, task one with uh, partial command list first. Then we will use those uh, command list to complete this uh, script template. There are, I think there are s several to dos inside. Uh, there is one, two, three. There are three to dos inside. And we need to rewrite all net user commands with uh, PowerShell command list. After we complete task one, then we know how to do this uh, task two. You see the all the review questions are similar to lab zero file, but we will rewrite them with a uh, modularization. Okay, the first uh, task one. Let's open a uh, PowerShell. PowerShell seven. Open here. I think uh, since we are going to uh, change users, it's better to run it as an uh, administrator. First, let's uh, find all the commands, command list on, on local users and local groups actually we demonstrated last uh, uh, demonstrated this Tuesday, right? We use get commands and now find the local group then we see the local group related command list and for the local users Yeah, these are the command lists used to manipulate local users. Now first uh, view all local users. So it looks like uh, this one, right? Uh, guess, get use local users. We use get local 
users and try to see any parameters we can see all of them uh, SID name verbs debug no it looks like uh, we don't supply any parameters then it will give us all the local users here you see all the local users name enable or not description this default disabled guest disabled sh ssd enabled test enabled you yours may be different from mine it does not matter you only need to see this uh, administrator and a guest you should have these two and you see one is true the other one is uh, false we can also use get local groups get local group group and you see we have so many groups is users right now for that administrator I, I wonder what groups you see is in this administrators right? okay we can use a get group get local group dash name followed by that administrators administrators and we get this group how do we get the local group members get local group member dash name administrator group was uh, it says group administrators uh, we have a s as a set and you see there is only one user inside it's an administrator right? how about uh, users the other users are power users so guests we have guests now we have uh, guests we have only one guest how do we uh, get local group members we, we only know how to get all the users just uh, get local user without any parameters it will show us all the local users we will specify the user with uh, its name we just did that right we specify the name parameter then we will get its uh, name or it, we can also specify its SID here get uh, local user dash name with an uh, administrator so this is the uh, administrator on my computer if we want to select some properties object for example the SID I want to see is the the SID of the administrator you will see this is the SID of the administrator right. we only select name and SID these two properties task 3 create a local user and a check it's uh, created so let's uh, new local user we already see from those commands right so it will be new local user now how do we specify the parameters a counter never expires description disable full name name password no password password never expires what if confirm verbose information variable okay we specify a name Let's say uh, Trump. Now, anything else we want to specify? Let's use the simplest uh, way. Right? Other parameters you can check the online help to specify it accordingly. Here it asks us to supply a password. I just have a simple password. 
unable to update the password because the value provided for the new password does not meet, meet the length, complexity, or history requirements of the domain. So we need to supply a stronger password. Okay, now it's uh, created. We can uh, now check it's created. Here it already show it's created, but we also want to check it. We use get local user dash name Trump. Uh, we, we get it. Name enabled description. If we want to show all the parameters. How do we do that? Uh, what properties? Select object. Let's use store and a format list. Show as a list. Okay. So this way we can see all the information. Account expires description. Right here we just created user may change the password is true and uh, enable is true oh this uh, task iii task 3 and task subtask 4 delete local user and check is deleted so delete uh, this uh, local user remove local user right, specify we can use the uh, SID or your use name. It's up to you. Here is SID. Do we need a single quote to quote up? It looks like there is no empty space between these uh, substrings. Okay, it's removed, but nothing tells us. We can bring up this command. Now it says user shown was not found. Okay, we complete this one on um, task uh, subtask file. Check local user is disabled, then enable local user and check is enabled. First, we need to find a disabled uh, local user. Right. We use uh, get local user to find all those users. Here you see we have uh, two disabled disabled user, the guest. The test is true. Now let's uh, create a new user and uh, disable it when we create new user, new local user. We specify a name, let's say uh, Biden. Now enable or not so that is disabled. Right? Supply a password. Okay, now you see enable is uh, false. Okay, we have a user called uh, Biden who is uh, disabled. Certainly, we can use uh, get local user to check it. Name. Then we want to uh, show all properties, store everything, format, list. Right. Name, disabled, non task, uh, subtask, file. check. Uh, we need this one. Here's disabled. Then we are uh, enable it. Then check is enabled. So it looks so we use the uh, set local user for button. And uh, we want to enable. Right? So when I type enable, enable does not show up. Enable. Account expires, never expires, description, full name, password. It looks like that enable. We have different commands. Enable command. 
enable local user dash name button now again we need to uh, check he is enabled Now you see this enabled is true. I will complete this one. Now, task 6, check local user is enabled here. I already checked this button is enabled. Then disable the local user and check is disabled. So we use disable local user dash name button then bring up the command to show he's uh, disabled, right? Enable equals false. So we complete this at uh, subtask 6. Subtask 7, check local user's description, then change the description to a different one, and the check is changed. So we already see this one, the button if, uh, description is empty, so let's change the description. Set local user name button now let's say description here we have description let's say button is the policy don't no then we get the description right you see uh, this one the description okay this uh, task one is done and uh, again we can have a review about those commands work on local user disable local user enable local user they paired together get local user set local user paired together New local user, remove local user, paired together. We have a rename local user. Rename, we don't know whether it's rename the full name or just the username. I think it's the username. Okay, now come to this script. Right click, open uh, new tab. Here is a template. Click raw. Control A, Control C. Come to our folder. We create a new empty file. Call it one frame dot ps one. Actually, we c you can call it any name. It's up to you. Maybe a usable, uh, a readable name is better. Use a man. Manage. PS1. Now open up with uh, Visual Studio Code. Here, rewrite all net uh, user commands with PowerShell command list. So we need to find them first. Control V paste here. Now this uh, template about 358 lines. Actually, many of them are just comments right? see so the comments we have uh, so many lines for the lines at the top you all know this is the comment based help synopsis description example link and if you use get help now could we not get help like this user manage t 
Come on, pace one. Okay, now you see uh, all these things show up. The name, the synopsis, syntax, how do we use it, and here is a description, related uh, uh, links, remarks, to see the example, uh, get help dash example. So we can tell try. Followed by this uh, program name dash examples, and you see example one, and the letter or uh, and the username you want to remove, and the letter V, and so on. Right. Okay. Next step: rewrite all those net user command with uh, the Command list we just practiced. Control F, find the user. Uh, find the net user. Right here, the net user commands. Here or in the comment, we can also change this one. How do we check a user exists or not with the command list? Here we totally have nine of them. Actually, I think it's just eight because it's a comment, right? It's a comment. Here, yeah, one, two, three. Here we have eight of them. But uh, it's better to change all those, including also the comment now. How do we check a user exists or not? We can use a get local user, right? A username is supplied. The username is supplied, so we can use get local user dash name followed by that username, for example, button. Then we get it, and uh, if we use a uh, trump, now we, we get uh, something like this. Now it's red. So what does this red mean? The red means it's written to the standard error, right? It's written to standard error. So could we uh, just suppress the standard error? Or we can use, uh, let's say, result equals this one. And if we want to show result, and nothing we have because this one is uh, written to the standard error. If we want to suppress this one, how do we suppress it? Could we use, uh, but this syntax is the syntax or uh, batch programming, right? Actually, there are some options of PowerShell script to suppress error. So we can check those, let's say suppress, no, I didn't see it, let's google what's the name it is, uh, PowerShell suppress error output. This is the, the one uh, in batch uh, script. That is uh, available. Certainly, uh, because we are want to write the write program purely in, in PowerShell, if we use this way, Now you will you rewrite the arrow to null. Now the null device uh, like this. Then we this one will not show up. This arrow will not.
not show up. But we want to find the PowerShell way. So the PowerShell way, PowerShell suppress uh, error output, error output uh, with uh, that is uh, automatic available. So what's the automatic available name? So we can stop the error. The power share way. We can use the error action here. Power share way. Error variable. We want to find the error action. Allow to specify which action to take if a command fails. Silently continue or ignore. Arrow action preference. So we didn't see uh, which one we are suppress it. Silently continue. Let's try silently continue. The so power share away. Error action silently continue. Right? This is a power share way. So we can use this one. Copy it. And replace this one. I I suggest you uh, put them together. So put them here. And uh, we know this uh, address if it's empty. Now you can say uh, address is empty. Address equal equal no or nothing here. Now what is the address? Get type. It's a node. You cannot call it on null, null value the expression, so it, it equals null. So then you can test is it true or not. This equal null is true. So if it uh, equals null is true, then the user not exist. Otherwise, uh, it exists. Here we check exist. So we use NE not equals null. Not equals null. Then it uh, exists. The next uh, net here is used to check the user not exist. Right? This one is used to check the user not, e not exist. So it equal null. We wanted to know how to how to do it. So we enter x cut this and put put it here side by side. Now in this place how do we do that? We can use this one. I copy the command we just used here. Gonna we paste here. Not exist, so it uh, equal null. Right? This means uh, not exist. It looks like it has some uh, should be on the left side of the equality. So this is a convention, so we can 
make it more readable. Certainly, it's okay. We we write like this. No equal. Right? This way is not exist. And you again, you can test this one. Control C. Now put it here. It's true. But here now we need to replace this name. We are supplied with the available username. So this is a partial way to test the user not exist. Here this one will user to to see a user's information. Comment it out. We already know we can use get local user dash name followed by the username we want to see everything uh, select object star and show it as list otherwise by default it show as a table you we will not see all those columns. So this is how to reveal a user. So what this uh, as a unapproved, unapproved verb. Anyway, it's okay. There are a set of verb. You may uh, use those uh, set of verb listed by Microsoft. Now this one list all users. So list all users. We already know how to list all users. Just to get a local user, right? Create a user, supply a username and a password. We use a new user a new local user supplies the name the name is a uh, username and supply a password here this is a password these are the parameters we are going to use so Usually when you are work in a program group, the interface are given, you are asked to implement these functions. So you need to read the parameters carefully. Then other developers, they will call your function with these uh, pre-decided parameters. Delete user we use uh, remove now these two tools let's uh, complete all those uh, net user first here this net user activate user we know this one is uh, change the user to, to be active this one change the user to be inactive or disable it right here is the enable and disable so this one is enable local user. So the automatic com the automatic complete enable does not show up local user. dash name username this is the enable local user enable local user yeah it is so why well, I didn't get all complete here I know it show up enable local user dash name 
username. Here we disable the local user. Disable local user dash name. Oops, Connor Z. Username. Next, uh, net user. This one is used to change the user's full name. We use set user, set local user. Dash name. Here the parameter is a username, then full name, followed by this uh, parameter full name. Okay, this one change user password. And you use the password. How do we change it? We use set user. Set a local user dash uh, name username and the password. Okay, now we get it done. All the net commands are re rewritten in PowerShell now. Now we want to complete those to do's. To do one. So here, these functions are given. We are asked to implement this function to later user. So based on this uh, usage, it has a parameter username followed by this uh, parameter your name. So in cooperation, you need to check the interface, which means the parameters. Here is two to two. Also, we are given we are given the parameters username, this user description. To the three, we, we are given the usage, how to use it, username, here, dash changeable noun. This changeable is a switch. Here, we specify it means uh, we turn the switch to be true. How do we make it a false? We can use this way or just uh, remove this uh, switch. Oh, these are the three to do's. Now, in the implementation, how do we do it? First, we need to write the parameter. As we want to see the parameter here, we need to copy this parameter. It's just one parameter, right? Username for this delete user function. Can you see? Copy it. Go back to that delete user. To do one. Here, delete user, we need to specify the parameter prime block oops prime block it shows so many stuff again if you want to make your program better you can add a various uh, constraints or valid validation you are encouraged to do so instead of just complete this uh, lab simply. So I s encourage you to add various uh, validation. Here is a parameter username. We even don't know its type. This is not a good idea. How do we delete the user? We use a remove local user, right? 
remove local user dash name followed by the username. So this is to do one. Now for that to do two again we need to find the usage first. There are two parameters, one parameter called the username, the other parameter called the user descript. So I would like to copy it. Can you see? Go back to that uh, function to do two. Here again, we need to specify the parameter block first. Again, here I, I didn't specify the type. This is not a good idea. Username, user description, they, they are strings, right? Now, how do we change it? We use set local user dash name. There's a username and a dash description. User description. So if you are not sure about these parameters, so we can check that set local user, set local user to get its help, or you just use this one description, it's called description. Right? So the best way go online, get help online give me the help about this uh, set local user oops now here we need to google it. google it set local user and you see google maintained this uh, thing but uh, microsoft didn't Set local user. Here you can see the description name and the tab string string. Then you can specify the type accordingly. Right? String string. You may check the lecture to add various uh, various validation now to do three again we need its interface first uh, to do three we have only oops to do three to do three here we have a switch and uh, your username this with a dash is a parameter name right can you see Go back again. We need to add parameter block first. Now we have two of them. One is the username, the username is a string, the other one is a switch. Now, this switch we, we need to. Specify it. Oops. Switch. Again, I suggest you specify their tabs. String. Allow a user change the password. Now we need to find that help. Here. User may change password in this set local user, followed by a Boolean variable. Right? User may change password. So we use a set local user dash name is a username now. How do we specify 
this uh, changeable. We need a if else if changeable. Then we said the user may change the change its password. Dash uh, user may not uh, without this uh, word complete. I don't know how to type it. To avoid typo, go to its online copy and paste here. Now, here is true, right? Else is false. Else, I'll copy this line. Move to false. Right, now we implemented all these to those, to the one, two, three. This is the implementation. You are asked to test them. To the one, implementation go to check uh, the user exists. So for all those uh, net users, actually, we need to uh, test the whole program to make sure all those options, uh, all those commands worked. How do we test it? First, we, we wanted to make sure uh, we save it. Right? But there is one thing. This set local user's password is a secure string. And uh, we may uh, check it first. Here for some oops. Uh, let's say it does ch change the password, user change the password. Here change this function. We can go to a, s a look on this main loop how we use it. Right. We error list user a and a change a Password and modification. You see, change password is here. And when we try to get the password, here we use a get user info function. So what is this function? Let's scroll up. We have a get user info function. Here, get user info. If this is a password, we see we have a as a secure string. So this is good. Now we can run it here. And a letter, and a, and, a, and a question mark. Then it show the usage. Create a user, remove user list, or user view a user's profile, activate user, disable user, and so on. So we can first test. Uh, Execute and quit. Uh, execute and quit worked. Then we run it again. We type uh, list all users. Now we see uh, no one is listed. Uh, I type error list user, list all users, but none is listed here. And uh, since now is listed, I don't know which one to choose. So we need to quit and find that list or use this L. Why it does not work. Quit. And type this uh, Q. These things show up. Right? I type quit, then the users show up. So there is a problem. We find that uh, list here list user scroll down to this place dash arrow list all users 
So white uh, does not show up. And when we type this Q quit, it quit it and show up. So this is a quite an interesting uh, problem. So let's see how do we solve this problem. When we check here, it's list user here, and I try to find the implementation. Right click, go to definition. Here's the definition. Get local user, and we didn't specify any parameter. How about we? Uh, well, we didn't specify any parameter. The parameter block is empty. Could we specify uh, empty uh, prime block like this? Every time you modify it, remember save it. Type a list. Again, I didn't see anything. Uh, if I use try to uh, list again, now it show up twice. So this is quite interesting, right? Any ideas? We can use format. Oops. Format to force the uh, output. By default, it's just a format table. Can you just save it? We save it. Now we press L, you'll see the show up now. The program is reloaded. These are the scripts. Every time you modify save it, it will be reloaded if you continue to execute. Okay, now this one show up. Again, I want to find uh, the, the command here. Now we can use this uh, V to test this V. We and the letter V, and the username you want to view her profile, Biden. Okay, now we see all this uh, information. These uh, check letters work now. We can go to use other letters. For example, activate and disable since we already have a user button here and you see button currently is uh, disabled so we can use this activate to enable this user activate the username button user exists in this enable it just shows it exists it didn't show me whether it's enabled or not. So we can use a V to view it, but this output is, in, is, in not, is confusing, right? We want, to s we want to get some result, for example, enabled or not. We button, you see it's enabled. So this is good. Now let's uh, solve this problem. When we try to activate, here that activate, Activate. Find the activate function. So what is that activate function? We will use all these create user activate here. After we activate the show, you, you see here, we don't have statements to show that a user exists. It looks like that user exists is show in the main program. So we need to go to the main program to see it. And also maybe we need to uh, 
write something here. Let's go to the main program. Check that uh, activate here. It looks like that is we activated here, right? And uh, there is a statement: if not test user existence, then we break, which means not exist. So, which statements show us the user exists? This uh, activate and de deactivate. We want the DMC. So now let's go to that test user existence. Here, go up. Test the user existence here. You see why they are show shop user exist, user not exist. Do you want to keep this? It's okay, maybe we we'll, we we'll just keep it. Certainly you can uh, try to make your program output more meaningfully. So it's up to you. Now I test uh, activate and uh, button is uh, enabled. Now I want to disable him. So we use uh, D button. Again, it says user button exists. It's okay. We use V to view whether he's uh, disabled or not. Type the name, button. You see, it never is false. Okay, this is good. Let's see how many. We will test. Now we, we need to test create and remove. Right? Let's uh, test this modifier first. For that modifier, we type M and the username you want to modify. Button. Here, hint, no change, just press enter. So if we want to change his full name, Joe Biden, full name, the user's password. Now again, because the past security policy, we need to type a strong password. Actually, I just type, type the same password. The user's description, we want to see a uh, user description is the uh, president now, right? So we can say Joe Biden. Here I only say Biden is president now. Let's say Joe Biden is a president now. Then can the user change it? his or her password. Here, change the password. Password uh, may change. Use may change is true. So we change it to false. False is no, right? Now, we need to view whether we change these things. View button. Here, we change this one. The description you see is not changed. So the description failed. And this uh, user may change the password succeed. And that password, I don't know whether it's changed or not. Right here, we, we change, change the full name. Full name is changed. Password, description, but this description. didn't work, so we need to go to that description. Go to that description, we check that Ctrl F, modify. Here, there's a modify part. Modify user's information. Okay, it looks like uh, get user info here. 
I want to find that uh, in the main program first here in the main program when we type letter M first we get the user right, get the username the username then we try to change the full name here did you see something here we get full name then we change the full name this one worked right we don't need to change check this part we want to check and this is a password we want to know there is a secure string in that get user info function and this description here user description this part we want to change the user description so why this part does not work change the user description username your name now in this case maybe we use debugger is better so we specify we set breakpoint here and run it to see why the description is not changed here is run start debug a file now we add a letter M to modify the name pattern pattern exists, that's good. Full name Geo Python use password user the description Geo Python yes here is a president I know when you change the description you put a period at the end would that cause it not to work because I didn't add that period and it worked for me okay the uh, period is here okay thank you very much now let's uh, put this period here to see uh, what happened we press uh, enter now we stop here right we come to this uh, function now we go inside that function here step into come here but we see something here the username is pattern the user description is here there is a dot is the period is still there right now we continue this one now we come to this place set local user we go one step further it's done the set local user is done and we, we see this uh, script there is a period over there the username it also looks good the description is a uh, job button is USA president okay now let's uh, just continue right Change the password. Let's choose a yes this time. We will again type a button. Here, that a real button is still, uh, this description is still not changed. Okay, you now you see this uh, set local user. How about we? We just use the command directly. Here, we quit this program and use command uh, directly to see if it worked. Set local use local user dash name button dash description. Let's say just make it simple. Button dot. No, we we add a period to see where where this period will be. Added. Then we uh, use get local user name button, and we want to select the property. Just everything.
you see here this dot this period is there so now is this local user is it case sensitive when you type it in case sensitive here is yeah. you have set local user and everything is lowercase i don't know if uh, okay it uh, does not matter the case does not matter okay now when we run inside here it does not work when we run outside it worked so any idea to solve this problem we can use uh, a like your, uh, description yeah let's use the uh, quote we add a quote uh -huh. It looks like your description is misspelled on 247. You got D E C R I. Missing an S. Missing an S. Descriptions. D D E S C. D E. Oh, here. Okay, thank you very much. So now you see it's not this uh, the problem of the quote. It's a problem that this uh, description, the primary name, I didn't type it right. Okay, thank you very much. Description. So here we, or well, we can check the here. Description. Control S. Okay, now we save it. We we find the problem. And okay, now let's run it again. Right, the letter M modify name button for others i don't want to change just price under price under now here we type uh, joe button is the usa president now at a period and the password price under i don't want to modify it now view it button here okay now it worked Again, we want to see uh, any other functions we didn't test. Is this a uh, create and remove? Right? The create and remove we didn't test. So now let's uh, create a user. C, create user, and it's a username we want to create. Now let's type Trump. Password. And you see here it says not exist and uh, it will create one for us. Here no change, just press enter. This uh, does not make sense because I'm creating this uh, user. So you may improve this part by yourself. Now we type V to view the user that we just created. Right? We see the user created, uh, enabled, everything looks good. Now we delete the user. Trump. It says uh, it exists. It's fine. You may uh, make the hint more meaningful by yourself. So I just uh, want to list all the users. And you see uh, Trump is still here. The delete does not work. I think it is R, sir. Oh, use R. Okay, thank you. It's not the delete is disabled, and you will see it's disabled. Jump is disabled, and you see here, the enable is here. It's true. Okay, thank you. Now we uh, use uh, R remove. Type Trump. It says exist. Now we use L list. See now Trump is gone. Okay, we complete this uh, lab, and you see the. Uh, Result that all complete is uh, quite uh, easy to make a uh, typo. And now we quit this program and uh, see the try to solve this uh, review questions. Here we have uh, all these review questions and a template are provided. The first one download these images and save it in uh, hierarchy of hierarchical photos right like this and uh, now this uh, create procedure it will also 
be completed in this uh, template. And the extension may be any image extension, not necessarily a JPEG. So we just open this one. So this is a this is a download images. Here you see we have a primary block. We treat this whole file as a function now. And some to do. If this uh, same folder is true, save all images under this destination folder. Else, you save each image under the folder specified in the image links file. So here, we can check where we want to save that image. So the save image is uh, here, right? And we save the image and then we check this file. So this file is uh, created by this one. And uh, whether we save it to the same folder, we check this subfolder. Here, this subfolder is destination folder plus that uh, line two, as we demonstrated during the lecture, we have a text file. So let's go to this uh, code. Did I upload this text file here? Here, images.txt. Right, we do have this uh, text file. We have this uh, image link, image name, and this uh, subfolder. So you need to uh, create a text file by yourself. I will not demonstrate this one because I tested this uh, text script. It worked. So here, this script. But you you need to complete this to do. So this to do. Where do you need to change? You only need to, need to you only need to modify here. Right? So let's uh, do it together here. Control A, Control C. Go to our folder. We create one. Control A and quit. Download images dot ps one. Then I open it in Visual Studio Code and Ctrl V paste the code I just copied. So for this to do, we only need to change this part. Right? The destination folder. So we only change this uh, subfolder. If this same folder is true, so if same folder then what do we need to do we only need to remove this part right we only leave this uh, this subfolder is only this destination folder then they are the same so we only need which means we don't need this uh, this part we know this line 2 is specified by this field right this field specify the subfolder. Now else we save them in the specified uh, subfolder. So we move this one here. Now this is a total we, we complete the total here. So I only run it for you, you only need you need to uh, specify other lines in this text file. This Im images dot txt. So again, I copy this one. Can uh, can you see? You may need to follow this hierarchy here to specify those uh, extra lines you need. I only specify this uh, memory layer. For others, you can specify similarly. I need to create the text file as well. Images. Ctrl V, paste them here. Ctrl S, save it. Now I test this one. We use download image.
download image dot ps1 and uh, what parameter do we need to specify here we use a dash press your tab key you see the image links show up destination folder create destination folder same folder verbals okay those are the the common parameters offered by PowerShell so we specify image link with these images so maybe these image links will use a more readable name for example image link file now so the same folder if I don't specify it will be false right I didn't specify the destination folder then it would be the current folder so you can check the uh, source code press enter now you see a web request complete and uh, uh, for the subfolder called animals and the memory ends, they are created because same folder is a false and you check animals memory ends, and there are two images you see this image Okay, now if we specify that same folder because it's a switch variable which has supplied like this and press enter. Now, this time I want to specify the destination folder. Dest destination folder, I just call it pix. Okay, now you see a pix folder. Here it didn't show up uh, that pix folder created or not. So go up to lab 06. Now we see that pix6 is not created. It's not, uh, it does not exist. If so, if we don't specify that create, now you see it uh, all downloaded in the current folder. Right? This is docs.jpg and uh, elephants.jpg. They will be saved on the current folder. If we don't specify uh, create, so we call specify create destination folder and press enter. Then you see the create uh, for the pix and save all the images under this uh, pix, right? These dogs and elephants. Okay, this uh, script worked. You, you, you need to uh, complete this text file and uh, test those uh, parameters. Test uh, uh, all the combination of those uh, parameters. Now, this uh, download and install, we wanted to install it. It asks us to modify the environment available. Here, the template is uh, provided. You open it. Here, this is uh, a modifier. Here to do add pass equals true. If this one equals true, now there is a typo here. Please correct it. Add this exe pass to the environment available pass. Else remove it if it's inside the pass variable. So here is a add, not at. Again, we, we can copy this one. Ctrl C, copy it. Come back here. Create a script file. Let us call it. Call the same name. What's the name? It is modify pass dot uh, ps one. I open it with the Visual Studio code and then kind of we paste here. Now let's check that to do is implemented or not. If not, we need to uh, implement that one. Scroll up. Here it says uh, this add pass. 
And you see we have a if add pass, we add this exe pass to the pass variable. Please read the program, try to understand it. Here, there is a pass array. If it contains this exe pass, we say it already exists. Otherwise, we, add, we will modify that pass array. We add this exe exec pass to this pass array, then convert it into a string and use this uh, set environment variable from this uh, system environment this uh, module, this class, to add it and also add it as a machine environment uh, variable target this target is a machine set as a system variable instead of the user environment variable and you can check the flow of this program here. We use this uh, get environment variable to get the path variable right? here. And also its type is the system. Machine means the system variable. Now here we split this uh, path string into an array. Then with this array we can use this uh, method of the array. Contains whether it contains our exec path or not. Okay, it uh, looks uh, all the functions are added. So you only need to understand the program and uh, test the combination of these parameters here. The parameters, we have only uh, two parameters, a uh, pass, uh, switch, add pass or not. So we can test like this. Modify. Oops, why this modify is not here? The modify didn't save it here. Uh, professor. Oh. Side fix. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, we control X, cut it, and put it uh, in this place to make the uh, uh, organized. Otherwise, it's quite easy to mess up. Download it. Uh, download. Oh, not download. We want to uh, use that modify path environment. Now we specify the path. For example, I want to specify just my lab 06. So it's a dot means the current folder, right? Usually, it's better specify the absolute path. Now, for that one, for example, that uh, add or not, first I don't specify that add path. Then it will try to remove it if it's inside that path. And you see it says it's not in the system environment variable path. Now we try that add, add path. And you see it's added here, a dot. So this is not a good idea. So now let's uh, remove it. Remove it, we just uh, don't supply that add pass. And you see uh, here it is just the uh, look, right? And it says here is, this one is added to the environment variable. Look just like a check. And check is here. Here. It says, it again it says, add it to the system. Now this hint is not right. right. This hint is not right. You need to say, it's inside. Here you see it's not in, in this system, but here we get something like this. This hint is not right. So please uh, make this uh, hint more, uh, more meaningful. But when we check, the dot is removed. Right? Dot, the dot is removed, so it uh, worked. Only the hint is uh, does not make sense for this case. So please uh, change this hint to make the meaningful. Now the last task resize image. Here you need to test the scripts works as it's expected, it, so it's better to test all those combinations of those parameters. 
you can also cast some exceptions, then use the techniques you learned uh, in the lecture, how to handle those exceptions. So just as a practice, is not required, but you are encouraged to do that. So the resize image here is all the, uh, let's see whether the, the to-do destination for is provided exists or can be created. If it's provided and exists or can be created, then we save the all converted image to it, else save all converted image alongside their source image. So we have a source folder, destination folder, whether we want to create this uh, destination folder is a switch, and with the new width and a new height, we can change it. Here we, they are all supplied with default values, right? So let's check this whether it's implemented or not. Here, does this pass? Not exist. Just say source folder not exist. This source folder now the destination folder. If it's not empty, then check whether not empty is supplied, and we test whether it exists or not. If it's not exist, then we check whether we are allowed to create it. If not allowed. We say destination for not exist and uh, quit the program. Else we are allowed to create it, so we create this folder. Okay, it looks like everything is implemented. Then we change the uh, image magic path. You need to change your image magic path if you didn't install under this folder, right? Then you are strongly suggested to use that modify environment variable uh, script to add this uh, path or your image map magic to the system uh, path environment variable. But uh, here is another idea we just uh, constrained the effect in this uh, script. Right? We don't uh, affect the target system. Here we get the child Adam get everything from the source folder, right? The records, get all those stuff. Then we specify the new size. The new size is specified like this, and this format is uh, referred from these references. You can check the references. We need to specify the format like this. That is an explanation mark at the end. Here's the input image. We know through this for each object we get each image. Then we can process each image. So here is the image. We process the current image. Again, we check the destination folder. If it's not empty, then we save it alongside the old image. Here you can see we save it like this. Else, we save it. Uh, here, if the destination folder is not empty, we save all those uh, converted image to this uh, destination folder. Otherwise, we save this image alongside the source images folder. Right? Okay, that looks good. Now, here we convert the image, convert the image, and output, and show a hint here. Then we call this a magic convert. To resize the image. Okay, it looks uh, all implemented, but you need to uh, test all those parameters. If there are problem, please solve it using a uh, partial debug. Okay, let's uh, run it to have a look. Can you, uh, can you see resize image? We call it resize image. Here, resize image dot oops. 
press one and open it. So please follow the convention of PowerShell naming convention. For example, resize image, you may use a camel case. Okay, Ctrl S, save this one. Now I just uh, run a simple example. For example, I want to know that is a pix. It contains two images, right? And there are animals. There are, it also contains uh, two images and one subfolder. So let's use these pix. Resize image dash source folder. Follow this uh, pix. Now, do we need this backward slash? Or we need to remove it? So you need to test uh, both cases to see whether it works or not. Then we specify the destination folder. If we don't specify the destination folder, it will be saved under that uh, source folder, right? Along those uh, original image. We need to specify the new size. If we don't, we, they all have uh, they will have a default value, so we just uh, use the simplest uh, stuff. Here you can see a hint converting this image is converted to this one, so it looks good, right? Save and pix. Also, this source image converted to this one, so it looks good. You can check it, pix here, they are saved uh, together with those. Uh, source image. Here you can see the size is uh, converted to 512 and 512. Oops, I closed that folder. You need to check the size, whether it's uh, converted. Right here, check the details. Here you see the dimension, 502 times 502, so it's good. The elephant, you check the dimension here, it's also good. You can also open it to have a look. Now, did you see this one? This size is right, but it's dark. So what's the problem happening here? The problem uh, I specified here, you check this link by yourself. The source Im image range is uh, set correctly. You can check this reference why it uh, does not work. So, here when you check this uh, source image, is right. Now this source image is, uh, is good, and the range is, is also 800 times 612 pixels. But when we try to convert to this one, it uh, does not work. So you may wonder, how about we just test here, inside this command line. Certainly we can do that, right? We use convert, and not, not this one. Magic convert. Well, you, you see this command is here. We know how to how to do it. This is resize. This is new size. Now, how do we specify that new size? The new size is specified like this. Here. Let's try uh, 512 at 512, the one we want, right? And uh, followed by an exclamation mark. Is a new size. Certainly, you can check the reference to find its explanation. We need a resize here. Dash resize. And the old image, the elephant. Now, we specify just let's say new element. .jpg. And you see it's done. When you try to open it, 
lab 06 oops it's on the pickles here when I, I try to do it here did I yeah I have an elephant here I have an elephant here and you see this new elephant you see it's empty right it's a uh, black so what problem happened here when you open this one with some uh, image investigation tool you will see uh, those some fields in the header is not set cor correctly in this case you need to download another elephant and uh, make it uh, work here we, you will suggest to uh, download those jpg elephant at least uh, you, you need to know this uh, expansion uh, extension you know, elephant specify image then you check one go inside and if you download this image so image as you see this one is a JPEG image so you saved on the lab 06 and uh, let's create elephant 2 elephant 2 dot JPEG again you can check whether it work or not here we create elephant 2 and a new alley tool then you go inside to have a look this uh, elephant tool is this elephant and you see the size here then you check this uh, new alley tool now you see it changed like this so how could you keep the aspect ratio so you may uh, check the uh, user manual by yourself you can add more uh, parameter to the scripts for example keep uh, add a switch keep as aspect ratio or not you can add a switch here say keep keep aspect ratio if it's true you keep it keep the aspect ratio otherwise you you resize it like this what? this uh, does not look good okay I think we completed everything